St. John's 19 and 30. But I'm going to read, I'm going to start from 29. St. John's 19 and 29. A jar of sour wine was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it and put it on a hyssop branch and held it to his lips. And when Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished! Exclamation point. With much feeling, it is finished. With a resounding, it is finished. After all was done. And you might be asking yourself, what was finished? Well, the redemption of mankind was finished in one moment in time. In one moment in time, the whole thing was finished. From the beginning of the Bible until this time, the whole creation was waiting for this moment. One moment in time where he hung upon a cross and he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, then I will draw all men unto me. So he had to have been born in this time. He could not have been born in any other time because he had to have been lifted up for all men to see. He had to have tasted for everyone the death of, of what sin, the penalty of sin does. He had to have tasted that on that cross. And he had to have suffered for all mankind. So he could not have died at any other time in history. This was the only time where they had such a death called the crucifixion. Matter of fact, after Christ um, was crucified, they did away with that whole system. They got, they got rid of it because they said it was cruel. But had Christ died, came before or after, we would not have had a crucifixion. It would have been like he died of a gunshot wound or he died by a stabbing or something like that. That would not have done because that death would have been in the secret in the dark and they could have buried him or whatever and nobody would have known really. But because this death was so public, because it was in a time and an era where the Roman Empire was thriving and everybody, they said all roads lead to Rome, meaning everybody was in Rome. All tongues and, and, and nations were there in Rome because Rome was the empire at the time. They owned everything. They were, they were it. They had everything. All the territory around, they, they were it. So at that time, it was a great time for Jesus to show the entire world that not only am I dying for the Jews, but I am dying for everybody. Everybody. And so they had to lift him up. They had to show the world that here it is. This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I came to do. I came to die. I came to die. That was his purpose. And when he said it was finished on the cross, it was something that him and his father had agreed upon. And his father asked him, would you do this? And he said, yes. And in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was tolling with that because it was such a terrible death. It wasn't like a normal death. It was such a painful death. And I can imagine just thinking about it, just like a child thinking about a beating. But it was a far worse beating than what children think with a belt. This beating that he was getting ready to take was far worse. And, and he was tolling so with that, they said that sweats of blood just dropped from his head, just thinking about it. Now that had to be some very deep thought for him to be considering the kind of death that I have to die for humanity. It's going to be painful. But there on the cross, he said, and once he said, Father, one, he asked the question, um, will this cup, can this cup be passed? And he said that three times. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And to fulfill all prophecy, he had to finish what he started. Could you imagine him not finishing what he started? He come, he had a good life, he had the disciples and everybody, and then he don't, he don't, he's not crucified. What would have happened to the entire world had he not been crucified? Well, none of us would have made heaven. Not, not any of us. He had to finish what he started. He had to complete his mission, and his mission was to die. And so it was very, very important that it was finished. He did away with the old system of bloods and bullocks and all that. And so we don't have to do that anymore. We don't have to slay the lamb anymore. We don't have to sprinkle no more blood upon the door. Someone has taken the place of the lamb. His name is Jesus, the great I am. He took 
the place of the lamb. He is the lamb of God. And he's the one who finished it all for us. So that we don't have to go through this whole ceremony. He said, now you can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace in times of need. I am so glad that he finished it. I'm so glad that he finished it because I could not have finished it had he not. I could not have done what he had done on Calvary's cross and I would have been lost if I was, had to be a partaker of that. But Christ said on the cross, it is finished. Finished. For all of hell to hear it. It's finished. Just in case you want to know, it's done. I'm, it's finished. There's nothing else to be done. This is it right here. It's finished. For all the world to hear, this is it right here. It's finished. Everybody saw and heard. History cannot deny that he was here. History cannot deny that this took place because it was a public beating. It was a public crucifixion. And Christ said on the cross, for you, for I, it's finished. Your healing, it's finished. Your prosperity, it's finished. Your salvation, it's finished. Everything, finished. And all we have to do is receive what he has died to give us because it is finished.